All right, it says I'm live. It says that I'm live. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Stacey Storino. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the number one place for the more mature entrepreneur to go when you already have a business up and running, ideally. You understand that when it comes to content marketing, you kind of have to go where the attention is. So you know you have to do content marketing. But your content marketing really must drive more traffic to your business so that you can do more business, right? So that's what a lot of my pre-edited videos on this YouTube channel are all about. Um, I have playlists for TikTok growth. My biggest TikTok uh, growth client is at over 820,000 fans or followers on TikTok. I also have uh, playlists having to do with content marketing more specifics for TikTok. I have playlists that have to do with Instagram SEO, marketing on Instagram, uh, you know, Instagram reels, of course, Instagram reels for adults that don't want to dance and sing. There's so many different playlists on my YouTube channel. So if you've not subscribed already and any of this sounds like it's a good resource for you, you do want to hit that big red subscribe button. You do want to click the bell notification and select all because although today is the end of 31 days consecutive doing live streams and posting replays, I'm going to go back to doing Wednesdays at 10 a.m. lives on this channel. So you definitely want to get notified when I go live. It's my weekly give back for the whole rest of the year for those who, you know, are supporting me in this community. So free Q&A sessions, I'll always have like some sort of teachable moment to lead off in the beginning. And then we talk more about the ins and outs of content marketing. Again, focusing on how that content can get you conversions as a business owner, okay? So um, also, if you've missed any of the prior days in this live training series, no big deal. First pinned comment, both live and on the replay, I have the playlist for the 2022 Entrepreneur Business Reboot Advice Playlist. Yeah, we do talk about content marketing um, after the more teachable moments there as well. But there is a fair amount of entrepreneur-based mindset training as well. So if you like that, you can get plenty of that in the 31 days now total, because it's January 31st as I'm going live. Hey, Miss Bridget, good morning. Um, and hashtag live, hashtag replay, because even if you're watching this on the replay, I do want to give you like a thumbs up and a heart to at least thank you for being so awesome. <laughs> for coming and spending some time with my content, whether it's live or on the replay. If on the replay you have any questions, I do tend to check back on all of my videos that posts, my pre-edited ones that go on this channel a couple times a week, and also the live stream replays. So definitely, just because you're watching this on the replay, you can definitely ask any questions that you have. So I want to say hi to the students that are here. Make sure you guys give me a big thumbs up. Forget helping me out because I could care less in one sense. It's to help other students who are watching this, uh, you know, other students who are subscribed to me, I should say, get pinged while we're live. And it also will help to suggest this video out to the subscribers for this channel on the replay. So you're helping them out. It's not about me. All right, so let's make sure I said hi to everybody. Hey, Bridget, what's going on from Bridget Upcycle Lawson? Uh, hey, Susie B from uh, The Speckled Loon. Uh, what's going on there? Good to see you. Mike Reinhardt's here. Good morning. Hashtag live Lenore. Love is here. Hashtag live. This is the final day of the 31 days straight. But again, every Wednesday I will go live. And if you guys have any questions on this or anything else that I teach on my channel, that's a great time to catch up with me. That'll be at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays. Awesome. Okay, so get rid of an extra tab here. I'm going to go into the training. We're going to talk about today how to optimize goals with a success spectrum. Again, if you've missed any of the previous days, every day in this training series, this 31-day free training series, was meant to stand on its own, so no big deal. Um, if I do make quick references to prior days, I'll try to name the days, but you know, this is a great resource, uh, the 2022 playlist I've posted, so you can definitely catch up. I'm not going to hide the playlist. This is here to help you guys, all right? 
So today we're going to talk about increasing your odds of success while simultaneously decreasing the odds of you engaging in self-sabotage as an entrepreneur um, through what I call a su success spectrum. It's kind of a cheat sheet for goals. And if goals sound like an airy fairy thing to you, on days two, three, and five of this 31-day series, we set true like entrepreneur goals and then we bulletproof the goals. And then on day five, we talk about how to kind of have like a success keeping ritual about five, 10 minutes a day, if you even need that much. But it's going through to make sure you keep in step with goals that you've turned into plans. So days two and three, it's all about taking goals and not just having them be wishes that you state. Um, because if you don't do too much more than that, then who cares? It's about turning goals into plans where you have step-by-step -step laid out. You have your mile markers laid out for your short-term goals that take 90 days or less to achieve and the long-term goals that may take longer than that. But under no circumstances, and I know I've said this practically every day, but it's for a reason. Under no circumstances do I want you to get to December 31st, 2022. Hey, Michael Cole, what's going on? And say to yourself, as you look back over 2022, I didn't achieve many, if any, of my goals, especially as an entrepreneur. A lot of what I've taught along the way with these 31 days, you could use in your personal life. But because I've been a business coach, I'm going into nine years and I've been an entrepreneur for about 20 part time while I was a lawyer for 17 and a half years working down Manhattan in the Bronx. Uh, but then otherwise, full time since I teach what I do and I do what I teach. Right. And I have plenty of students. I have thousands across the world now and tons of testimonials as I'm redoing my website. I'm going to have a nice testimonials page featuring my students and their businesses so you can see all the cool stuff that I've helped them to do, right? Because I can leave that horse to water, including any of you watching this live or on the replay, but you're the ones that don't have to just drink. You have to implement. So one of the days in the past, we talked about the concept of a power hour for guaranteed implementation on behalf of your business, even if it is a side hustle for whatever the reason, but it keeps you wearing your entrepreneur hat more and not less. Um, and it keeps you, oh boy, um, it keeps you um, producing on behalf of your business. Lives like these, classes that you get for free or paid or whatever, that's not implementation time. That's learning time. And knowledge is potential power. It gives you the power to act more intelligently. But the thing is, if you're not actually acting and implementing, then this is much ado about nothing and you're not even Shakespeare. So let's talk about the success spectrum and how you as an entrepreneur can use this to keep moving forward and to do it in a way where you actually feel like you can get somewhere. Um, and if you're like, Stace, I set goals towards the beginning of the year with you through this 31-day live stream training gauntlet we've been running. And, you know, I'm really not keeping them, and I don't know why. This is The success spectrum can help you also on that front because you've got 11 more months to go. That's the good news, right? Till you get to December 31st and you say, oh, did I achieve many, if any, of my goals or not? So there is such a thing called a success spectrum. It helps you, the way I teach it, to solidify what success can look like for you. So in the past, during this training series, we talked about establishing parallel whys, a why or a North Star that's going to guide you throughout 2022 on a personal level, and then like a parallel why uh, that's going to guide you as an entrepreneur with your business throughout 2022. And be some commonalities, sure. But the entrepreneurial stuff is going to be at least to some degree different and demand more out of your day if you're hitting your business for real this time than what it would have cost you, say, in 2021 when you might have done little to nothing with it. Um, we have talked about setting those twin whys and how to not do it in an airy-fairy way. I mean, if you like the law of attraction and all that stuff, great. I'm not saying poo-poo on that. But if you're like, oh, I don't want to do any more vision boards and stuff like that, 
day one of this series is worth going and checking out because that's really going to help you crystallize what these things are and why they're so important if you don't set them and it's just goals, 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 and to-dos, to-dos, to-dos. And I'm going to check off my list every day. And I'm going to have that goalkeeping ceremony or that goalkeeping ritual every day for like five, 10 minutes. And I'm going to see all the goals that I crossed off that were baby step goals. And I'm going to be like, yeah. And then I'm going to look at all the short-term goals that I've accomplished or almost accomplished. You know, yeah, I made some progress on that. And same thing with my long-term goals. That's really great, but if you don't have that North Star guiding you, you're going to burn out at some point. So day one is important. <laughs> um, so like, you know, in previous sessions from day one, and then at times we brought it up since, your why, your entrepreneurial why is important. Um, it's that carrot. Life's going to give you stick enough to keep you on the path or make you want to get back on the path if you've gotten off of it as an entrepreneur. So we've discussed fleshing out your why and making it something that's believable, achievable, and capable of manifestation. Because, you know, if your why or any of the goals that you've set of any kind, baby step, like in 24 hours, you should be able to get those goals done. Short-term goals, 90 days or less, long-term, longer than 90 days. If you're not setting these goals and setting your intentions within the year of 2022 in a way that's realistic for you, um, even if it's kind of stretching you a lot, but you're like, I could still see if everything or almost everything goes right, I can achieve that like stretched out version of success for my goal. You're still less likely to engage in self-sabotage when you're setting goals like that. Okay. Hey, what's going on? Oh, I'm chicken swell. Don't cry, man. I'm going to be back at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays on this channel. Uh, she says it's the last of the live. It's the last live of January. Thank you for all the good business information. You're welcome. And on Chicken Swell, don't forget I have all of these edited videos. Okay, um, I'm gonna be posting on my community tab on YouTube and reminding you guys of more recent videos that I've posted that you should go back and check. Right. So you know if you just subscribe to me over the last month. And you're like, oh, no, I'm going to miss the daily lives. There's so much information on this channel. And honestly, almost none of it is truly dated. So you still have plenty of stuff to enjoy on this channel. And then Laura from Music Chick Art is here. What's going on? Hashtag live, hashtag replay. Good morning, Miss Laura. So here's the thing. What, what's this about the success spectrum? So I want you to kind of like in your mind's eye or use your imagination I try to imagine what an actual spectrum kind of might look like on which you can experience success in terms of your various why related goals, you know, especially professionally. This can work personally, too. And I want you to think about this spectrum, right? Because for some of you, as I go through this, it's going to feel like a novel exercise. But if you really throw yourself into it, the success spectrum is going to likely usher in a bit of a paradigm shift for you. Who knows? So I want you to give it a try. So we did talk about on days two and three, especially the concept of entrepreneurial S-M-A-A-R-T goals. I threw in that extra A, and it's more important to entrepreneurs. So if you've heard of SMART goals before, mm, this is a little something, something extra for you. So make sure you check out days two and three from the replays if you've missed them. So with respect to any SMART goal with the extra A in it that you might have set, I want you to imagine it placed on like a bit of a spectrum where there's three different connection points along the spectrum. The two on the outer edge of it and one about up the middle, right? So there's three connection points on this spectrum. And those three connection points for this particular goal, you can rinse and repeat with as many personal and or professional goals you want but one goal at a time. Think about that goal. Think about a spectrum, the three connection points. These connection points represent three possible outcomes in terms of succeeding in connection with that goal, right? So at the one end, the beginning end of the spectrum, it's where you have marginal success in terms of achieving a goal. The one about up the middle it's like a normal level of success with respect to succeeding in connection with that goal. And then on the outer edge, it's like you enjoying 
the possibility of you enjoying epic success in terms of achieving that goal. Okay. And the reason why I want you to do this um, is because it's useful. Let's, let's jump ahead and say, this is useful for people who, if they set nothing but hairy, scary goals, like for example, you're starting at zero. We're done with January as of today while we're live. Maybe you've made no money or very, very little money in connection with your business for whatever the reasons. Tomorrow is February 1st. It's a new month and a new day and you have 11 more months. So don't worry. But let's say you set an income-based goal for yourself of like $100,000. By the time you hit December 31st, you should be $100,000 plus or minus a smidgen. It would still count. But if you're starting at zero and you've never hit $100,000 before and you can't make many, if any, sales at all, or maybe the sales that you do make, no matter what your offerings are, no matter what your business model is, maybe the sales that you do make are really just a family and friends. And if you've been with me on any of the prior days of this 31-day live stream series, you know that I say that that technically doesn't count. Okay, it's income and that's great, but like you have no idea if you have real proof of concept until some stranger out in the wild, they see something on your website, they see one of your social posts. If you do podcasts or YouTube episodes, they see that. Um, and or they get on your email list and at some point they're motivated to say, hey, take my money. And they had no other connection to you that you know of. That's proof of concept, not family and friends who may or may not be pity buying from you. And I'll say as a quick aside, for sure, depending upon your facts and circumstances, one or more people in your network might really be your ideal customer and they really do want what you're doing and they might not be pity buying at all. But you know what I mean? You don't really, really get true proof of concept. You're not really, really sure if you're successfully selling out there that all the pistons in the engine block of the vehicle of your business is really working until a stranger says, I know, like, and trust you enough to buy something from you, even if it's a small something from you. Until you get proof of concept, it's hard to say if you have a real business or not. Honestly, you may have a potential business or a hobby that family and friends are willing to support. So like, if you're really at that point, or you haven't even made any sales, to set a goal of $100,000 by the end of the year may not be realistic for you, especially if you're a beginner entrepreneur, period. Am I saying that it's not possible? No. Maybe if your facts and circumstances are such that you say, hey, Stacy, screw you, $100,000 by December 31st. I'll at least put that on the far end of the success spectrum where I'm enjoying epic success. And if I make more, I make more. Okay, fine. I'll let you do that. Well, I can't, you do whatever you want to do. I can't control it. But what I'm saying is what's a normal level of success then for your business? If you're starting at zero or you didn't do so hot this January, maybe up the middle of the success spectrum in this example, you say, Hey, Multiple five figures, about $50,000. That would be like the center point. I really do think that if I work my business persistently and consistently, I take the advice that you have been giving me over the last 31 days. I look at the pre recorded videos neatly organized into playlists on your channel. Guess what? I think I can do this. I can do content marketing that coaxes conversions. I can handle it. Great. Great. Oh, hey, Linda Nagoda. What's going on? Um, so I think I could get to multiple five figures by December 31st. Maybe I could do 50,000 or more. I think that could be a normal level of success for me. When you think about it, Stace, I got 11 months left. And, I, you know, crap. If I did $10,000 a month in sales, I'd be past 100,000 for sure. So, you know. It's only several that it's only it's only several thousand dollars a month. Doesn't have to be anywhere near ten thousand, and I'll be able to get to fifty thousand or more. 
It's not so hard. I could see that being a normal level of success. That's great. Then why am I telling you about the beginning connection point on the success spectrum where you have marginal success in terms of achieving your goal? Do I want you to shoot too low and not have great expectations for your business? No, I am not saying that at all. But I think it's important to set a marginal success level, level of success in terms of achieving a particular goal, like let's say your annual income goal. So maybe marginal for you is, okay, Stace, I have 11 months to make at least five figures. I want to get, you know, to like four figure success. <laughs> I want to get to a thousand to $5,000 this year. And I have 11 months to do it. Jeez. You know, if I'm persistently and consistently applying content marketing, if I'm driving traffic to my business, not always directly to a sales page, 98% of people who go to your website, let's say for the first time, won't buy. 2% will. If you're super good, it might be a little more. But most people have to, they're kind of kicking the tires and figuring you out the first time they go to your website. The first time they see a product listing or a sales offering, even on social. 98% um, of people the first time will not buy. You have to put, as I've said before, kind of deposits into the bank of KLT or no like and trust. And that's why both relationship marketing and, and straight up sales-based marketing is important. And you can do quite a bit of sales-based postings. You're a business after all. You have to. And if your you know, bio or profile or about or whatever makes it clear on social, for example, that you're a business then, you know, you'd really have to be a lunatic fringe person to object to seeing sales posts on the regular. But if you are not with a lot of no like and trust or KLT factor for your brand, you're not like one of these legacy brands that are like, as I've said, these planets with their own gravitational pull. You know, they can content market however they want. They just need to put points on the board so that they don't seem like stodgy and old fogey. Yeah, they're going where the attention is. It doesn't necessarily have to be great. They could optimize it or not at all. And like it almost doesn't count because people are still going to look at them. And then the algorithms go on each platform. Oh, they tend to like content from this business or other businesses like them. And it's just going to get shoved out anyway, because if nothing, if for nothing, if for no other reason, the algorithms are looking at the user's um you know, content consumption patterns, and they're trying to do digital matchmaking, right? Does this make sense? Let me know in the comments down below if this makes sense. But if you're just starting with this stuff that I teach on this channel, if you're just, especially in the pre-edited videos in the playlist, if you're just starting, you know, it might be hard for you to really believe a scary, a hairy, scary, like epic success level in terms of, say, an income based goal for your business for 2022. We'll use that as an example of a goal that you're putting on the success spectrum. You may say, hey, I've got 11 months left to do it. And if things go really, really well for me, I could see myself doing 100,000 or more. So your conscious mind is rationalizing that. And, and maybe you do feel comfortable or it's a bit of a stretch goal, but you're right, Stacey, I should put these goals on spectrums. So I kind of have like the marginal level of success, thousands of dollars. Maybe I can hit four figures before the end of the year. It's not maybe. Yeah, I definitely can. Or maybe I've done that in the past, but I want to get to five figures. I've had some students come to me and say, when you're talking about how many students get to multiple five figures and they're like intermediate level of success or six figures and over advanced students, I feel bad because I haven't even gotten to five figures in sales with any business I've ever had ever. So you know what? Even if you feel bad because you quote unquote only made a thousand, a couple thousand dollars with your business, whether it's a side hustle to you or not. You've done it before. So when you're looking at creating, say, for example, an income-based goal, you put it on the success spectrum and you say, my marginal level of success with 11 months left in 2022, as we sit here now, is I could do four figures. I know I can hit a thousand. I know I could do a couple thousand over the course of 11 months. 
Yeah, I'd have to basically not to try. <laughs> I can do it. Or if I've never run a business before, I'm pretty sure I could hit a thousand, a couple thousand dollars in sales over 11 months. I better, right? So your subconscious mind can at least accept the marginal level of success. So that's at the beginning point of the sales of these um, the success spectrum. The middle point is what normal success could look like for that particular goal. In this example, it's your annual income-based goal. So maybe normal success to you, given where you've been in your life up until now, especially as an entrepreneur, is maybe like what should be should be normal for you is five figures. Should I, I should at least be able to get to $10,000 in 11 months. My good God, I'm not even making $1,000 a month to get to $10,000, you know? For some people, that's your marginal level of success. But you guys know what I mean. Given your facts and circumstances, set a marginal level of success that your subconscious mind should be able to buy like this, okay? Do I want you to stop there? No. Do you want to stop there? No. But you're less likely to self-sabotage if you believe I can make a thousand, I can make a couple thousand dollars. I've done it. I could see myself doing it. So the normal goal isn't a crazy stretch. If you really applied what I teach here for free, anything that I sell paid, you might really be able to hustle and get to 10, 20, $30,000 worth of success, maybe up to $50,000 worth of success, right? So, and then epic levels of success for you is like $100,000. Now, if you just simply set a $100,000 goal for yourself and you know you, you don't know why, but then you start to self-sabotage. You start to like prioritize other things. Hey, Marilyn Rizal. Hey, Michelle McLaughlin, good to see you. I mean, you know, I'm not asking anybody to out themselves publicly, <laughs> but you know yourselves. If you are a little bit getting into self-sabotage when you think of having a six-figure business, even if it's by the skin of your teeth, or you just fall a little shot, right? I remember an advanced student of mine a couple of years ago, she set a six-figure goal and she hit 90 five, six thousand dollars, she was still excited and you could imagine why, right? But she said marginal, normal, and then what epic level of success would do. And she said to me, marginal I was able to kick off in a couple of weeks because I got really serious. Normal was tens of thousands of dollars, which I've done before but they had to be better years. See, she'd been in business for like a decade. But she's like, I want to make sure that I'm hitting at least $50,000 by mid-year. And I can do that. That's not like a hairy, scary stretch. I might feel some temptation to self-sabotage to get towards the center point of the success spectrum for my goal, in this case, an income-based goal again. But like six figures is not like off the wall. When you're starting from zero and you go by December 31st, I want to have a million dollar business. Again, I don't want to tell people, you know, they can't achieve things. But I think we can all guess that unless you have wonderful circumstances, going from zero to a million dollars in a year, that's kind of not believable and achievable in most cases. But like, I want you to imagine what each of the three incomes for any entrepreneurial business-based goal that you might set. An easy one to start with is an income-based goal, right? You still have 11 months. There's plenty you can do. I want you to imagine each of these three outcomes you're setting on your success spectrum, marginal at one end, normal in the middle, epic at the other end. I want you to imagine what each of these three outcomes are like, how that would show up or materialize in your life. So in the income-based example, like what would it be like to be making thousands of dollars and have a profitable business? Like when maybe you never did, um, you know, how would it look like when you're running up the middle and you're at $10,000 or more income in 2022 and maybe you've never gotten there? 
what would it feel like if you got all the way to, say, for example, $100,000 a year? And I want you to try to, in a couple days ago, we talked about making goals more believable so that both our conscious mind and our subconscious mind would buy it. Your conscious mind, once you rationalize things out, is a much easier sell. Your subconscious mind is that reptilian brain that's trying to protect you from anything from disappointment to death and harm up the middle, right? So when you're self-sabotaging, you're just trying to keep yourself safe. So instead of getting mad at the self-sabotage, understand what it's there for. And then, of course, do your best to, you know, get outside that comfort zone and get more used to being uncomfortable because entrepreneurs take more risk than non-entrepreneurs across the board. You really, really want to have a business, then you really, really have to understand you're going to be uncomfortable a lot. Uh, Me too. Because by the way, I finally got the thing fixed on my sales page because I suck at tech. <laughs> so for those people who wanted the red velvet batch of frosting really quick, I forgot to mention this, but it's one of the comments down below. It'll be in the show notes or the description for the video on the replay. Uh, the playlist for all 31 days of coaching will be the pinned comment, um, both live and on the replay. But the red velvet batch of frosting is uh, like the frosting on top of the cake of your business, the marketing frosting. And it's going to have relationship marketing plans and straight up sales based marketing plans that go way beyond Valentine's Day. So no matter what your business model is, really um, products based business, handmade, even coach, course creator, other things, you can really make use of this course. And it's 47 bucks. Okay, so honestly, I do have the link for that below as well. If you're watching this on the replay, you will see it in the show notes. Uh, If you're in any of my student groups, I'm going to post the link there as well, because that's what y'all like. That's like serving it up on a silver platter. You're on my email list. Check later on in the day. I'll send a separate email about that. So look, once you've kind of fleshed out the experience of what real success is like, even your hairy, scary success, but do it with your more normal success. You probably don't have to go too crazy in terms of marginal success because your subconscious mind already buys that you've done it before or that's very doable. That's like marginal success. Normal success you know, your subconscious mind starting to get uncomfortable, but whatever normal success is for that goal, it's kind of normal. It's up the middle. So you can get more buy-in from your subconscious mind. For the hairy, scary goal or the epic success version of achieving your goal, I do want you to involve yourself in that practice that we spoke about several days ago in this series, where you will win your subconscious mind over more and more often when you make it feel like the hairy, scary goal or whatever it is that's going to take you outside of your comfort zone where it feels real. Oops. Because once it feels more real subconsciously, it's less of a threat to your reptilian brain, especially if it feels real in a positive way. So for example, what does success look like for your business making $100,000 this year when maybe you've never done that before? What does it feel like for you to have that level of success? I want you to really paint like a, you know, a using all five senses, like this kind of like image scape in your mind. What does it look like for you to make a hundred thousand dollars? What does it feel like? You know, what does it sound like when I say sound like if you're making a hundred thousand dollars, are you jumping up and down and squealing with joy? Are you telling your family that that's what you did as of December 31st and they're all cheering you on? Uh, What does it feel like physically? Are they high-fiving you? Are you like, you know, feeling like, you know, your skin going into like goose pimples because you finally did it, right? You've been talking about this for how long and finally you've done it. You're finally successful. Like, what does that feel like to you, right? What does it even like smell like? Like, do you go away on vacation to celebrate $100,000 in income as of December 31st, 2022? And you're feeling the sands of the ocean between your feet because you took a tropical vacation, if you're me, Um, you know, and are you smelling like the ocean air? Do you hear the seagulls cry? What does it taste like, right? 
Are you having yummy food at a success banquet that somebody cooks for you at the house? Do you go out to a restaurant, like a really fancy one, and everybody's toasting you um, and you're eating and drinking fine food because you did it? How does your husband, wife, significant other look like, sound like, feel like when they're hugging you, when they're kissing you, saying, oh, my God, you did it. I'm so proud of you, honey. When you are fleshing out this like five sense experience scape in your mind, even the hairy, scary goal, let alone the normal goal, it's a bit of a stretch. It's going to take work, but you could do it. You're going to be uncomfortable. Like when you flesh out the experience of actually achieving your goals, it really should give more leverage to you subconsciously. Consciously, you've already gotten buy-in, but like subconsciously, it's going to give you buy-in. We talked about this, I believe, on day 17, like the fleshing out of the experience. And like, I think I even quoted to a study about how the subconscious mind, the reptilian brain really needs this. And then it's less of a threat because it seems more real. And of course, in a positive, happy-go-lucky, upbeat way, right? So, Lenore, I see your question. I'm going to get to that in a second. That's not bad to do. The success spectrum is also useful because some people only imagine success of epic proportion or nothing at all. So if you're that kind of person or you could be that kind of person, especially when it comes to your business, the problem with an all or nothing approach is that you may throw up your hands in disgust if you barely make it across the goal related finish line, when you should be celebrating that you even accomplished that goal at all, whether it was in a way that's kind of marginal success, normal success, or epic success. I don't think I have to sell you too hard about you celebrating huge for epic success. But at least if you can knock out marginal in the next month, then you're trudging towards normal, which becomes the next lowest level of success for that goal. And even that kind of feels like, oh, that's the lowest level of next success I could get to. It suddenly doesn't feel so scary to me intellectually for sure, but also, um, you know, consciously for sure. But subconsciously, your now normal level of success is that much easier to believe you could get, right? So a normal level of success is actually more realistic, of course, than an epic success. I want you to set the epic success version of what achieving any goal of yours looks like. Um, because here, epic is nice and all, and for sure I want you to shoot for the moon, because like as the saying goes, even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars, right? Normal or better, right? In terms of the potentiality of that outcome of your goal. But like getting a strike by bowling up the middle <laughs> isn't bad either, right? So normal, you shouldn't pay short shrift to if you're that kind of person, because it's really kind of a rung on the ladder, you can definitely get to that bottom rung on the ladder with marginal success. You can, you know, you can, you know, the next step or two up the ladder represents normal and then surpassing normal and making your way towards epic results. Epic results, of course, is at the top of the ladder. But if you don't start taking those first couple of steps, you're not likely going to see epic success with respect to any goal that you set. Right. So I don't want anybody to be a perfectionist about success right? So that you become some sort of celebratory party pooper. And I do want to remind you, as you're looking at other peers in your business, comparison's the thief of joy. I don't want you to compare yourself to others. Um, and or I don't want you comparing your expectations to perfection or something short of it. Because as I've said numerous times over the last 31 days, perfect is the enemy of done. Okay. And I don't want you setting standards that you can never really reach because then you're never really going to be satisfied. Um, that's exhausting. I don't want you to engage in pretty perfection because it's really pretty procrastination. Uh, perfection is really, as I've said, procrastination wearing its Sunday best. So you think it's all defensible, but really if we strike at the heart of what you're doing or not doing, you're self-sabotaging. So again, finally, your subconscious mind is going to be less likely to tempt you into self-sabotaging behaviors if you place your goals on a spectrum where there's a bar or two that, again, you think you can reach, believable goals really are achievable goals. And if you look back on day, what was it, four, 
day four, we talked about six steps specifically to psych out self-sabotage. So if you have missed that day and those steps, I do think it can be very helpful to you. Um, and we talked about why it's important to make your goals as believable as possible, because if you don't, you're going to self-sabotage more. Uh, and we did introduce that concept when we talked about realistic and productive goal setting, like for real, no foo-foo, no nonsense. That was on day three of this series. All right. And, and people do like the uh, book recommendations. I'm not going to be dropping any links to this, but um, if you want to really optimize your overall chances of success, if anything I said today kind of like represents a little bit of a paradigm shift for you in terms of setting your goals and viewing success and rungs on a ladder or connection points along a spectrum, you might want to check out the book Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by author Carol Dweck, D-W-E-C-K. All right. So that's the end of the teachings proper. I hope you guys found a lot of value in this. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. I know some of you did. I'd love to see more of you do it. Again, it helps people both while we're live because the system will ping them more. And also on the replay, the algorithm is going to recommend this out to people more. So more thumbs up. Forget doing my heart good. It'll help more students just like you. And that includes on the replay because the replay can continue to be pushed out, um, you know, to other students days and days later. OK, so I don't care if you're watching this two, three days later, <laughs> you can still give this video a thumbs up and you're still helping someone else, not even me out. So Lenore asks a really good question. As per usual, she says, I want to add affiliate links as another sale for each month instead of a footnote occasionally. Should I feature one affiliate a month? I'm not sure how to make this offer. Suggestions for this. I love this question. Okay. So, and if you guys have any other questions, I can go for a few more minutes. And then at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I got to hop into a, a paid for one on, uh, one on group coaching uh, situation in Funnel Dynasty. Uh, so for my Funnel Dynasty students, of course, I'm going to start in there at 10 a.m. And then after that, I'm going to 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time once a week with lives and replays here. And I already have a very good, um, let me just make sure my notes are pulled up for that. I have a very good, um, uh, you know, teacher plan sort of for the whole month of February. But of course, those are Q&A sessions as well. So just let me take a sip and I'm going to answer Lenore's questions. If you have any other questions live around the replay, especially about content marketing in general, feel free to put them there. A little bit parched. All right. So number one, I love the concept of getting like passive income. It's not truly passive. You have to do a little something for it, but not much. <laughs> I love affiliate income. I make good affiliate income every month. And as my platform gets bigger and bigger, yeah, you know, the ratio holds in terms of like how many folks tend to enroll or stay enrolled in tools that I recommend. I try not to recommend everything under the sun. I'm very choosy about the affiliate situations that I engage myself in. And of course, I'm not saying this to Lenore. Um, hey, Miss Amy Lindblade, what's up? Hey, Miss Lindblade. And thank you, Mike. Mike says, yes, definitely. Thank you. Um, like, for example, for me, down in the show notes or the description of all my videos, including live streams and replays, I have an affiliate link for flick.tech. I use flick.tech. I, I definitely use it. <laughs> and I have for the last, I don't know, two years now, ha uh, referred it to students with all different business models. Most of them stay enrolled in it because it's worth it, right? So like for Lenore or anybody else, I highly recommend that you get some form of affiliate income and that there should be, depending upon how you want to do it, there should be like a way where you make a concerted effort besides just passively putting things like say in the show notes of your YouTube videos. Uh, what if you don't do YouTube? Then what do you do? Um, you could have an affiliate link and a quick little blurb to it in the signature block of emails that you send out. 
Um, you know, and that's a good way to get people in too. Um, you might create some content, even if it's just one piece a month, where you put it out in front of your ideal customer and say, hey, given the main pain point, of course, you'd use different words, given the main pain point that brings you to a business like mine with offerings like mine, because you want a particular outcome. One of the tools that I think is very necessary in terms of achieving the desired outcome would be tool X. And I didn't create it, but I, you know, I've been using tool X because I'm my own ideal customer and it helps me, or I've been in business for however many years and I've been referring this out to other people. And of course I use it myself too for whatever. So I use it. I put my reputation behind it. And while I didn't create it, I'm creating other awesome offerings for you. This is a nice pairing to help you get whatever results you're looking for, right? That's a real legit valid way for you to drive traffic to an affiliate link that you get from the company that you're an affiliate for. Like Flick.Tech gave me my own unique affiliate link and I put it in content. Sometimes I drive people to it by mentioning it. Um, and it's a tool that I have my students use. It's a tool that I use. Um, if it's a tool or something that you use every single day, or you use it a lot over the course of the month, that's great. Absolutely be an affiliate for it. So, you know, I think even for my coaches and my course creators, I think that's important. Even, I don't care what your business is. Hey, Crochet Ray Ray. She said, I just started promoting my affiliate links lately, and it's been a nice surprise when people use them. Yes, it's low-hanging fruit kind of money. You might get dozens of dollars, hundreds of dollars a month when you first start, but once it's a thousand or more, you're like, hey, you know. <laughs> Bridget says, Flick is great for research. The scheduling isn't as good as later, but it's helpful. Yeah, I wasn't, the scheduling thing that came out with Flick, um, Bridget knows, but I'm just going to clarify, uh, you know, I could be an affiliate for later too. I, you know, I'd rather concentrate my efforts on driving my students to flick.tech. So again, you'll get a week free of it. And I think everything's unlocked for that week, that week. Um, if you use my affiliate link down below, see how I'm doing that, Lenore, <laughs> Linda George, see how I'm doing that, Miss Lenore. So my advice overall, and then I'll finish wrapping up my specific response to Lenore's very good question, is I think every business model ought to use affiliate income. You need to be legit about it. It's got to be something that you use um, and or that you've had students use and you know that it works and you're going to put your reputation behind it. So you don't necessarily want to be a shill for everything. That gets exhausting. But, you know, if you've got like one, two, maybe three max tools that you use so that you can get the outcome that you're getting, and then you have students or customers or clientele where it could legit benefit them, of course, you're going to want to drive them to the affiliate link. Um, but if you're not using it, then to me, it's unethical. And I've seen some people do some pretty unethical stuff in, you know, in nine, 10, I'm sorry, let me not lie, eight, nine years of being a coach. Um, so Lenora says, should I feature one affiliate a month? I'm not sure how to make this offer. It's kind of dealer's choice, right? So let's say there's three tools that you love. You could just rotate out one where you're doing a spotlight or a focus on it every, you know, every month, it's a different one. And a business quarter is three months, right? So the first business quarter of the year is January, February, March, right? So like, if you're quote, unquote, only using three tools, or those would be the three tools that you would want to drive traffic to an affiliate link on. That means that every business quarter, with your monthly spotlight and rotating them out, all three tools get their representation in one business quarter. And maybe you're not talking about only one tool all the time where you feel like you're a broken record, right? Or you could just say, hey, like for me, like flick.tech is practically a religion. I love it. You know, 
maybe I don't want to shill for so many things, or occasionally I can have some alternates. Man, I just want to talk about Flick all the time. I do. The only time I tend to talk about TubeBuddy, because I'm not trying to posit myself as specifically a YouTube expert. Come on. You know, if somebody's like, do you use a tool for to, for YouTube to help you with optimization for titles, tags? Tags aren't as important as they used to be, but they still can factor in depending upon the facts and circumstances. Don't believe me? Go Google it. Um, you know, YouTube's made a, a point of saying they're not silver bullets like they used to be anymore, but it's still important information for the algorithm to take into consideration when they're optimizing stuff for suggested on the home page and the search um, options and the suggested options rather along videos you pull up and search and all sorts of stuff. Um, so if somebody's like, well, what tool do you use, Stacy? Then I'll say, oh, TubeBuddy. And there's a forever free version of it. And you can get that in the show notes down below, which you can also do. But the whole point is because it's in the show notes or the description of all my videos. So you might notice, Lenore, I have at least two affiliate links in every YouTube video that I publish, right? And sometimes I will make a point of mentioning Flick or TubeBuddy. Um, in fact, in January, I have a couple of pre-edited videos that came up on my channel. And then I was like, you know what, with all the lives, it's a bit much. So, but there, there's a video that I did back on... And you can see how I did this too, Lenore. For an example, there's a video that I did. Do, do, do. Back on January 13th, I want to say, uh, how to create a coach platform uh, for my coaches and course creators, but really even my handmade business or product space folks. You can find that video very useful, too, for two different reasons. One, you can see how I kind of put an affiliate thing in there <laughs> in the actual content. And number two, um, it can help you that whole playlist that that video is a part of for this month. That'll help you with branding in general. I just shot it through the lens of coach just for search purposes. But really, anybody could benefit from that whole branding playlist series. Um, so I don't know. I think that anybody could have affiliate stuff. Even Mike could do it for like tools or equipment or anything for his smithy, let alone, you know, maybe stuff that he uses uh, for his, you know, um, for his farm and his farm stand. Right. Um, so and ooh, hold on just a second. Just a second. Bear with me. In the Funnel Dynasty group, one of my students um, is she was she was and still is teaching um, obedience classes for dogs in person, and she's going to continue to do that. And then she's creating an online course to sell in the background. You're welcome, Miss Lenore. Um, so. And I said, that's great because you've got the in-person classes as one stream of income from month to month. You can sell people who either don't want to or can't come to the classes or after they're done with their classes, what can they do for reinforcement? You can sell the course next. But then I told her, use affiliate income as well. Now, she's not necessarily selling tools or tech. I mean, these are dogs that we're training. So she's like, how can I have affiliate income there? I said I would get into at least the Amazon affiliate program. There might be other more lucrative programs for what you do and the products that you would recommend and say, hey, everybody who shows up for my in-person training class, here's a PDF with links for you to shop for the dog collar that I recommend that you use when we're training in this class and for the leash that I would prefer you use. And here's why I like this leash. Here's another link. And, you know, if you're wondering, because it's a new puppy and you're a first time pet owner, here's the pet bath and, you know, the flea and tick powder and whatever. And it's all Amazon affiliate links or maybe, I don't know, Petco or Chewy has Amazon uh, has affiliates. I don't know. But every industry, there's ways of getting affiliate income. So even, you know, my my dog training lady, my my obedience class running lady, um, she can she can get affiliate income every single month because she's got classes 
And soon she'll be selling a course to her email list every single month. And in that course, she could have the PDFs with all the links, all the things that I would recommend for the new dog owner. And then maybe even another specific list. If you're going to take this course live or electronically or both, here's everything that I recommend. She can get a nice steady stream of affiliate income every single month. So whatever business model you have, when I say beginners should have two sales or income produce in, income producing events a month, intermediate should really push it out to about three sales or income producing events in, a month. And then my advanced students who are six figures and beyond, they're selling every single day or they're having some sort of promotion coupon or whatever once a week. And they've trained their email list. This is, this is, this is reality. This is what we're doing. I'm a business. I'm going to act like a business, right? When you're a beginner, you're small and you might still be working out the kinks. Um, you want to make more money. You have to make more offers. Okay. If people on your email list doesn't like that, they probably weren't buyers anyway. Um, you want people who can afford to buy from you in theory, at least every single month, because even if you're selling jewelry, right? We talked about this a couple of days ago. Like how much jewelry could you sell, Stacey? Well, I'm not even a jewelry freak. I mean, notice I'm really kind of not, um, you know, I have my wedding ring, I have my engagement ring, and I have one ring that my deceased grandmother gave me and another ring that my now deceased friend gave me. Jesus. So it's like the death finger, but I love them. So I have to keep those rings with me, but that's it. Like I don't wear anything else, right? I really don't. So, but even I could tell you, I'm not your ideal customer, but I'm a marketing and sales coach for going on nine years now. So I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't saying you should have your evergreen product line collection or your signature product line collection, and you should be selling to that at least once a month, a coupon, a site-wide sale, whatever it is you're going to do. And then you might have seasonal or holiday collections that you create. They're smaller. They're going to sell out faster. That's the second time that you're going to sell jewelry. And there are jewelry freaks that will get jewelry every single month because they love it, because they're collectors because they want to stay fashionable. They want to stay young and in the game, um, you know, uh, oh, and or they're buying gifts for people. There are birthdays and life events and even weddings now way more than just the summer and early fall. Um, there are birthdays and life events and showers and all sorts of stuff every single month of the year. If you're a products-based business and you're only living for like the last business quarter of the year and maybe a couple other high big holidays and that's it. You've convinced yourself that you can't sell every single week. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not true at all. Melissa Pickle is doing damn fine and she is selling to her list many times over the course of the month. Um, you know, so honestly, that's just one example. Of course, Starla Moore had a very successful six figure and beyond uh, business. And she was selling skeleton key jewelry. So if you didn't even know what that was, yes, it's a very narrowed down niche, but she had collectors buying one or more pieces every single month when she did a limited product drop. Okay. Um, and then who was shopping for other people? So jewelry, you could sell that all the time. So you go, Hey, Stacy, if I sell jewelry, now I'm going to stump you. How can I get affiliate income? Oh, you thought you stumped me? No, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. Because if you're selling jewelry, you could become, say, let's say, for example, there are plenty of other options, but let's lean on Amazon again. You could become an Amazon affiliate and you could send a PDF to your email list for free of the links of storage solutions that you like for jewelry. Oh! <gasps> If you're not selling them, then let Amazon, you know, drive traffic to Amazon. And if they buy, you get a percentage. Your favorite jewelry cleaner, they'll be needing that a couple times a year. <gasps> you know, I mean, seriously, do you get the picture? Like, no matter what you're selling and who you're selling it to, there's a way that you can have affiliate income. Sure, for those of us that are selling B2B, it's a little bit easier because there's all sorts of software and stuff like that, like ClickFunnels and all that you could get affiliate income for. Uh, later, um, you could be an affiliate for later. They're going to give you like free credits if you don't get the unlimited plan. Uh, Canva Pro, you can you can make money from folks that say get the ninety nine dollar a year plan, which is what I use. I'm technically a Canva Pro affiliate, but again, like you know, for me, my big business are the big courses that I sell. Then are the other mini courses that I sell. And then, of course, there's a popularity plan with the digital downloads that I sell to help you implement 
on what I teach if you need help with that. Um, but, you know, I have the affiliate income largely from Flick.tech because I'm like an evangelist for Flick. Um, and then, you know, if you want to talk about YouTube, I'm going to point you to TubeBuddy. And that is a forever free plan, too. So does later, technically. Uh, Flick does not. You get the free one week trial with, I believe, everything unlocked. And then you make a decision what plan, if any, you want to be on. Unbound by Tiffany says, hello. Hello, Miss Tiffany. Okay, so I got to jet you guys, not because of Tiffany being here. Sorry, Tiffany. Uh, but because I have my one-on-group -on -group coaching in the Funnel Dynasty group, I will be relaunching Funnel Dynasty in about a week from now. Um, so, so um, for those that want to get it, I know Carol O'Neill had said she wanted it. It's going to be launched in a week from now. Uh, Red Velvet. Uh, frost in the marketing and sales plans for February. Um, I'm going to put that link in the show notes. Um, let me copy that so I can put it in the show notes. And um, the show notes are the description for the video. And then I got to bounce because I got to be in the Funnel Dynasty group because uh, the one on group, very detailed coaching. We spotlight your business when you're ready for it and all sorts of goodies. Um, I will help you tweak your marketing, all sorts of attention I just can't give here, and all sorts of teachings that I just can't uh, come here. Yeah, Mike Reinhard, Star is Key Club. Uh, if you're interested in Funnel Dynasty, make sure that you're on my email list. That's don'tbeafakeguru.com, and I will give you a guide that will give you the top 10 reasons why your business makes a bad first impression and what to do about it so your conversions will go up. Don't be a fake guru.com and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.